Hi, this is Steve Fabian. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create your data access layer using Entity Framework and WCF Data Service. So, so far we've used the technology template. We created a to-do list module. Uh, we haven't done any development. We just modified some of the properties of the project, compiled it, and then went to Dana New, logged in as host, registered the module, and placed it on a page. So, Today we're going to focus on two folders, the data folder and the service folder within the project structure. The data folder will hold all the entity data model information and the service folder will hold the WCF data service information. So we start with the data folder. You'll see uh, for your module an EDMX file, that's your entity data model file. You double click on that and you get your entity data model designer. I'm going to start by right clicking and now we're going to start defining our tables and our columns. So we'll design, design a table called to-do list item. It'll have a primary key of ID. Now we'll start to, design, to uh, define some of the other pro columns of the module. So module ID. And it's important as I'm defining these to set the correct data type because the result is we're going to generate a SQL script to create these tables and we want to create the columns with the correct data type. So module ID is an integer. Get 32. Then we'll add created date. And that's going to be of type date time. And then we'll have task, which will be a string. And let's say a uh, person. And now we want to have a status column, but we don't want to have it just be a text column. We have to type in the same status because we may want to do some things like let me see all the tasks with a certain status. So we're going to create a second table for our module. where we're going to store the statuses. Okay. And now we're going to create a, an association between these two entities. Make sure we get the multiplicity correct. So a to-do list item can have one status and, in, and the status can have many instances of to-do list items. So this way if we go look up uh, we look at the status table and get a list of, say, everything that's that's open. We can get a list um, through the navigation property of all the items that have that property. Okay, and we'll hit OK. Now we have that relationship. So we'll save that. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to generate these tables in our database. So we're going to right click on a designer and we're going to say generate the database from the model. Now it already knows uh, our connection string uh, when we created the module. Remember one of the steps was uh, copying the entity framework connection string into the web config. So it already knows how to connect to our database. And it's now going to generate that SQL script to create our tables and the foreign keys between the two tables. So we'll hit finish and now we have a chance if we want to we can review the SQL script make sure everything looks good um, and then we just right click anywhere in here and say execute SQL we'll connect to our database it already has our database uh, uh, in the use statement so we're going to connect to our database server and we're going to hit connect and now the command committee success completed successfully so our two tables are now created in fact if we go and look at our server explorer you'll see we now have two tables our to-do list items with our columns and we have our to-do list status. Okay. So our data model is done. Uh, we don't have to do anything for our WCF data service in the template it's already pre-configured to point to whatever is exposed through that data model. So we can now run our website On our test page, we have our instance of our module. Now, what we can do is we can browse using Internet Explorer. We can browse directly to that WCF data service, which is exposing our tables, our two entities. There's no data in there yet, but we can actually see that it's working. So if we go back and go to uh, desktop modules, all right, desktop modules, our module folder to-do list, and the service folder, and then browse to the SVC file, you'll see we get back our collections our two collections, our to-do list items and our to-do list status. And if we want to see a list of all, of course there's no data in there now, but we could do to-do list items and we'll see that 
Um, you know, right now it's empty. There's no data in there. Once we have data, though, we'll be able to use the RESTful API exposed by the WCF data service to access our data. So that's it. That's as, as simple as it is to build a data access layer using the Entity Framework and WCF Data Service in the technology template. They're all pre-configured for you, so all you have to do is use the Data Model, Entity Data Model Designer, design your tables, generate the SQL script, execute the SQL script, which will create the tables in your .NET Nuke database, and uh, the WCF Data Service is all ready to go, and we'll provide you with a RESTful API for accessing all the data within those tables. In the next video, uh, next blog post, we'll talk about uh, using jQuery and Ajax to use that WCF data service to retrieve data as part of using Knockout JS and MVVM client side data binding to get all the data now from your tables to the screen. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.